Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. servants we had land we had animal god was giving us ways as he was giving us the land he was giving us ways on how to conduct ourselves with the land at that time but even into today's time we are still to conduct ourselves in such manner as as much as possible y'all understand that so we are not to work on the sabbath we are not to cook buy sell right y'all understand those things this is, this is another thing we got to do on the sabbath day read this is the book of hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Uh -huh. So it said, not forsaking the assembly. What does that mean? You want, what's your name again, sis? Huh? Many. Vinny? Minnie. So what does that mean, Sister Minnie? You don't know? What about you, Sister Tamika? All right, read it again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So it said, don't forsake that, meaning that do not put it off. You have to assemble. Once you find out you're an Israelite, you have to repent, keep the start keeping the commandments, and assemble with fellow believers. These are ways on how to keep the Sabbath day holy. Not forsaking the assemble, come together with other fellow believers. All right, read. As the manner of some is. As the manner of some people is, meaning the unbelievers. They don't uh, assemble with people. They don't, they don't even care less about what God's laws say to do. Say, don't do, don't do like they do, read. But exhorting one another. But we are to exhort one another. You understand that, sisters? We are to exhort one another with good words of wisdom of, of the Bible, read. And as so much more as you see the day approaching. And we must do it more so now than ever because we see the end times getting near with the laws that they pass. Things that's going on in society, how evil it have gotten out here over the years. You as a 43-year-old sister, you've seen it from, from when you was younger to now. It's got a lot more evil than what you was, right? You see what I'm saying? Hey, my brother. Hey, how you doing today, bro? Hey, my name Nehemiah. This is uh, Soldier Jehu. What's your name? Huh? That's my grandson. That's your grandson? Your name Junebug? What is it? John Pauls. Hey, so what are we going over here? What are we going over today with your grandmother, bro? We teaching them who they are according to the Bible, what's required of them, how to clean up the communities, John. All right? You 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 interested in how to clean up your community? Or are you satisfied with how it is today? You cool with it? You ain't cool with it, right? You think we need to change, don't you? So what we doing now is teaching our young man how to change, our sisters how to change. But it starts with you first, John. You understand that? You can't get out here and tell someone else to change if you still being the same brother that you was, you know, three, four years ago. You understand? You have to change. And we have us, how much we change, sisters? By what? Oh, to what? God. To God's what? Words. But what key word? His commandments. His laws. You hear that, John? John, we must be obedient to God's laws in order to change. For an example, one law of God says, hold that, give me Leviticus 19 and 17. And 17. Read, John, where are you from, John? You from Chicago, west side? Let me, now tell me, if we apply this commandment that God gave us, you tell me how better off will we be as a people and how better will we change our communities, John? Read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. John, you hear what God says, John? Read it again for John. I don't think he heard. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So, John, if we if we apply this scripture right here, John, how better will we be as a people? We will be better. It said, so when you when you hear the murder rate in Chicago being sky high, does that stem from hatred? 
hating one another. Hey, Brother John, you, you know what God told you? He said, don't hate your brother in your heart, bro. Meaning that if, if we were to apply this in Chicago, if the murder rate will decrease tremendously. This time yesterday, when five teenagers were shot, one fatally, in the back of the yard's neighborhood, and police telling us today this was all due to an escalating gang war. And we want to take a closer look at that ongoing issue with Professor Sharon Fairley from the University of Chicago Law School. Uh, she also led Chicago's Independent Police Review Authority uh, and helped create COPA. Sharon, thank you for being on the program. We appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure. Okay, so what do you see as uh, the root cause of this ongoing uh, gang violence? Yesterday, the 9th District Commander uh, called it an historic conflict. Yeah, so what we're seeing here in Chicago is very consistent with what we see going across the country. There was a report that came out in the last week that shows that firearm violence is up across the country. It's at its highest level since 1994. Now, here in Chicago, I think our problem has proven to be even a little bit more intractable. There's not a lot of real hard data for exactly where this problem is coming from. There's a number of hypotheses. Some say that the COVID pandemic really put stress on a number of communities um, that really created a, a lot of, you know, sort of made it rife for, for violent conflict. And we know that, you know, violence does have a higher propensity in communities that are economically disadvantaged. So that is one hypothesis. But as we can see, there's just, there, it's, it's a really tough problem and we just cannot police our way out of it. It requires police and community working together. And that's what I think is our opportunity for the future. And Superintendent David. If we was to apply this, bro, these are commandments of God, uh, Brother John. Read, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. And we ought to correct our neighbors according to the Bible and not suffer sin on them. If we were to apply these, this is just one, uh, this is two commandments of God. It's so many more, but these are just two. If we were just to apply these two in the community, the community would be a hell of a lot better. So when you talk about change, it change calls for an action. We have to act on change. Then we can actually change, but it start with you. It start with you, sister. You too as well. We have to come back to what God told us to do. That's the only way we're going to change. And until then, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. We're going to be the last hired, first fire. We're not going to have nothing going on good for ourselves, talking about collectively. We can't do it without the commandments of God, brothers and sisters. We tried. Look, check out um, the Black Panthers. Y'all heard of the Black Panthers? Where's that movement at now? It's gone. Why? They didn't have this. What about the uh, Nation of Islam? That's dying out. They don't have this. That's this right. We've tried everything you can think of on the face of the earth. We've tried it. Nothing's worked. What have we not tried following God's commandments? We've never tried that as a, uh, as a people. You understand that? We haven't tried that since we've been over here on this shore, these shores of this land right here. We haven't tried that. So this is what we got to get back to. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.